I'll call the meeting to order. Was the meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. Uh, roll call. All members are present. And I have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Grabarski, second by Carlson. All in favor? Aye. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. Agenda is approved. Um, motion to approve the meeting minutes from April 10th. So moved. Motion by P, second by Carlson. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes approved. Uh, public participation? None. Correspondence? None. None. New, <clears throat> new business items? Veteran service report. Hi, Marge, county board members. Can you hear me? Sure can. All right. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, month of April, uh, met, we met with uh, 58 clients or uh, veterans. Um, did about 60 phone calls, uh, 550 electric transactions. Uh, we did 10 outreach uh, appointments. A um, couple for health and welfare checks with uh, uh, ADRC, um, and then rural transportation meeting to support uh, mental health. Cat team, uh, Scott is attending those, and they did the transportation committee, uh, putting the pieces together on that. And then 18th and the 25th, uh, I Scott attended the Faith Day and the AF High School workshop, fresh professional day. And then uh, I think I got notes mixed up there. Uh, then the Veterans Open House uh, Fair with Veterans Madison Rep at VFW Post. Uh, Scott's doing that. I think the next meeting is going to be June 19th at the VFW. Uh, on the 19th also, we had, uh, had a boss meeting for the homeless um, putting policies together. That's the second meeting we had with that uh, committee. So we're still on the works on that. On the 20th, uh, attended uh, uh, the monthly refresher training from Wisconsin Department of Veterans Affairs. And then the 25th, uh, the High School Workforce Professional Day. And uh, Scott attended that. So I think I got two dates on there or something. Or, yeah, those are up there. Anything else on that? You have any questions on my report? Um. Just a couple here, Bridge. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> How many are attending the open houses at the VFW? Uh, right now, I think it's uh, it's a mix between about uh, uh, about four to eight people are showing up there. Um, it's a good start. Uh, the word just needs to get out more into the public for that. And that's from four to six o'clock is what uh, Scott and uh, Mr. Proust from the Wisconsin, um, uh, from Madison Vet Center, um, he is hosting that with Scott. Um, Supervisor Pease. Um, today in Admin 5, we sent a resolution forward for your grant that you got. Yes. Um, do you have any ideas how you're gonna spend that yet or? Yeah, we're looking. Yeah, we're looking at uh, advertisement stuff because uh, that's mainly what it's for. Uh, so we're looking at putting a one of those uh, light up signs outside our building up on the uh, roof, not on the rooftop, but on the front of the building, um, so it sticks out more. And then we're doing a couple of TVs in our offices so the veterans can see actually what we're doing on our computers when we do claims. And then uh, we're getting more advertisement, uh, like those fly in the wind type things. Um, and then pens and pencils and stuff to hand out to the veterans when they come in. Um, and then we're going to use that also to help veterans out uh, in case of need. 
the reason why I asked that is that once you said how many are going to those open houses, I was thinking maybe possible <laughs> radio ads or some social media stuff to get yep. to yep. get to some more of those vets. Yep, that's where we're we're looking at. It's, we're in the starting phases. We have two years to the spend that money right now. So we're still in the phases of planning everything out to see uh, what we can, uh, you know, put towards that grant. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> I just have one more then. Um, I, you're planning on being at the senior vets day. Yep. Next, next Wednesday. Week. Yes. Yeah. That'd be a good opportunity then to promote your open house. Yep, we will. Okay, then going on to your financial report. Any questions on that? I'm not seeing any. Looks like you're okay. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Marge. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Uh, moving on to the yeah. health, health and Human Services financial report. So our March uh, 2023 report is in the budget or in the packet. Wendy, is there anything you want to add to this this report? No, just to mention that um, we're at about 17% in expenses, which is where we were last year at this time, and it's where we should be for the first quarter. Does anyone have any questions on the financial report? Supervisor Pease. Wendy, we heard last month that... Um, the expenditures in overnight care. Um, is that included in that 17% or is that um, a different area? It, it's included in there. The 17% is the entire budget where we're at. So in the case of the out-of-home placements, um, they may be a little bit higher, but some other areas might be less. I think children and families is less than expected. Thank you. Supervisor Grabarski. Thank you, Marge. Um, Wendy, I could ask this in a narrative or right now, but the uh, WIMCR that came in and it was listed as inaccurate calculations, was that, in what kind of amount are we talking about that that came in and I would assume this is from 2022 or is it 2021? It's from 2021. And the amount that was inaccurate was the crisis amount. It was calculated at a wrong unit rate. The rate was correct. The units were incorrect. And they sent a check for 800 and some thousand dollars. That was not due to us. I worked with Kyle and we moved that money into an account because we will be needing to pay that back to Forward Health. So uh, the steps that are involved, are you gonna, can you just send back the difference or do you have to send back the whole check and have it reissued? We're still waiting for the new calculation to come through. I moved the entire amount to be safe, to put it in a spot so that we had whatever we would need to pay them back. I am not sure exactly how much we will keep out of that at this point. As soon as we do hear back from Wimker, I will update the board. Thanks, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Wendy? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the Practical Sense Quarterly Financial Report. Are there any questions on that? My compliments to the chef. <laughs> you're, you're right. Yeah, it's Very a nice good. report and it's 
easy to understand. So thanks to Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, the director's report. Go, go ahead. Are there any questions in our monthly director's report? Supervisor Padzowski. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, just one question for Kelly. Um, in the behavioral health stats, is that are those all adults or is that the pediatrics and adults together? I wasn't able to decipher the difference. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, those are adults and children, and that is through the month of March. The numbers in April will be fully reflected in our June report. Okay. Is there, was there any way to decipher the difference between the pediatrics and the adults, or is it just generalized there? I think we could do that. Um, would you like to see them kind of split? Yes. We'll uh, split the areas that we can split. Okay. 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 I appreciate that. Thank you, Kelly. Any other questions? Are there uh, areas you wanted to highlight, Kelly, or? Um, April was a busy month. It feels like, um, you know, we are having some challenges filling positions, um, which is something that's being seen across the state, especially in uh, human service areas. Um, we did have staff who participated in several different activities in the month of April. We were able to participate in Reality Day um, something that staff really look forward to is a way to give back to the community and they enjoy it. It's a very nice event. Um, Kids Day was very successful again. Um, I think last year, possibly the year before, it was held at the fairgrounds because of COVID. Um, and it was back to the high school and it was well attended and seemed to go really, really well. Um, and then just a reminder that the Aging and Veterans Fair is coming up. Um, that is, I should have the date, 17th. the 17th, and uh, we would like to see as many people as possible. So if you have time, we'd love to see you stop by. What's the time for that? Please? I believe it's 10 to 2. I, I believe so. And there will be brats and stuff to purchase and a lot of resources and different types of events going on throughout the day. Uh, I guess the only question I have is how are you doing on cars? Or don't I dare ask? <laughs> I would say there is no update. Is that fair, Kyle? Yeah. So we are continuing to make it work, prioritizing the rides that are high priority or have a consumer, and then making it or making it work. Thank you. No questions for anyone? Moving right along. We will go to um, the project status report. Our project status report is pretty consistent to where it's been the last couple of months. Um, one highlight um, as we've been moving towards some of our electronic efficiency has been um, being able to send out text messages Go ahead. I forgot to ask her on her report. Um, I haven't seen anything since we talked like in February about we we're worried about um, actually running a phone bank for the food benefits. Has that materialized or has people just have went with it? I guess what what is your take on that? My take is that it's evolving. Do the rules and they had to. They will be adjusting. Um, a lot of education around that 
so far the compound has done the same. Um, they did some training for surgery to see if they would send them down and they were really happy to have the test performed. And right now they need to do surgery and um, for their continued patient safety. Um, for our people that remember give an update in the future. As you know, uh, we have a new requirement, um, an additional requirement that says that we require you know, to do standard clinical testing um, for any of the challenges that you see on the image. Um, and you probably will have to get that tested again for if you are at the future of getting your blood test done. So we will absorb that and then we will do that. Does the state absorb that um, testing or is that? They have yeah, but now who's going to pay for the testing once it restarts? Um, we were told it's already in our contract. So there's no increase in money. Anything else? Okay, seeing nothing. Uh, we'll have a report on the Coordinated Services Advisory Committee. Um, is Diane on? Yeah. Yeah. Diane, are you out there? Um, yes, I am. We did have our meeting. Um what was presented was um how the coordinated service advisory committee um should operate um in their advisory capacity. Um and we look uh next month to discuss the interagency agreements that we have with like the school, for an example. Okay. Yes, Supervisor Paslowski. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries very much. So my question, um, Coordinated Services uh, Committee, they ceased recording the meetings can anyone tell me why? I'm not aware why this or who made this decision to stop recording the meetings. Diane, can you answer that question? Those meetings have never been recorded. And I believe Kelly commented at the last meeting that there's some designated meetings that are to be recorded at the county level. And that was not one of them. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I suppose so. But it seems like I remember that there was there was some of them recorded in the past, and I just didn't wasn't clear why they're not all recorded. But thank you. Okay. Anything else? All right. Cody, are you doing the presentation? Why don't you come up here then? All right, and then you can click on um, the, the preview option on the link there for me. Um, all right, so good evening, everyone. I am excited to talk about the Narcan program that was provided us by the state. We were um, awarded an allotment, which came in last week. So far, we've been awarded 300 uh, Narcan bottles, which will be great since you guys know that we're going through an opioid pandemic right now in Adams County. Um, a lot of counties are in the state, so I'm glad that we're a part of this program. Uh, today, we're gonna, just going to go over a quick overview of the Narcan Direct program. 
Um, I'll give you a little bit of education on what Narcan is, how we administer it, and then talk about public health strategic plan to go over that too. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so the, the box to your left is what Narcan is, just to kind of give you guys a, a representation of what that actually looks like. Um, so we are part of the Narcan Direct program. We were awarded that of the spring of 2023. Um, like I said, when I began here, is, uh, we have 300 bottles to disperse in our community. Um, I went through a training two weeks ago by the state to be a trainer, so I can train anyone in our county. Um, so they'll be able to disperse on Narcan as well. So I could go to Friendship Connection, or maybe over to UW Extension, talk to um, someone that deals with those individuals that would like Narcan, and they would be able to disperse them um, out into our community. Another thing to note here is that our medical advisor has to award us a letter with that as well, which I'm working on in the meantime. Um, right now, you're, you can get Narcan over the counter, but it's very costly. So being a part of this program will be key for getting that out into our community as well. Um, next slide, please. So public health biggest role is prevention. Um, I know I've kind of advocated this for a while in the past, but with this Narcan program, our biggest goal is to educate, um, provide the resources such as giving out the Narcan and then to prevent. So the biggest thing that we wanna do is prevent um, overdoses and then accidental overdose deaths as well. So some of the biggest opioids that you might see here in Adams County or throughout the state is heroin, fentanyl, codeine, uh, meth, Percocets and then Oxy. Um, and then Narcan does not re uh, reverse the overdoses caused by non opioid drugs such as um, cocaine or uh, Xanax or meth or alcohol. Um, Narcan does, once it's administered to a person, it can doesn't depend on that person for opioids. So it may produce a withdrawal symptom. And then, even though withdrawals are uncomfortable, they are most likely. Um, not usually life-threatening as well, too. So again, with public health's role with the Narcan program is we want to prevent those um, opioid overdoses and accidental deaths. So by having this in the community, it'll go a long way preventing those as well. So uh, next slide. I wanted to kind of give you a scientific representation of what Narcan actually does. So if you pay attention to um, the bottom shapes with the line drawn through, uh, so what Narcan does is it blocks and reduces the action of another drug. So if this individual is taking um, heroin, as you see as the first shape there, um, where the line comes through is where Narcan is uh, blocking that receptor. Um, so a receptor um, is an antagonist. And what that does is it, it has an effect on the opioid narcotic antigens by competing at the receptor site, resulting in reversal of respiratory depression, um, associated with opiate overdoses. Um, so what it does is it, it connects with the half-life of Narcan, um, which is shorter than opioids and symptoms that can recur. Um, so again, just kind of give you the scientific way of how Narcan uh, works in the body. It kind of blocks those receptors being an antagonist. Uh, next slide. So the train response, um, you always wanna check responsiveness and breathing when you're administering Narcan. So to kind of go through a scenario here, if you see someone that might have a possible um, opioid overdose, you kind of want to shake and wake that individual. So you could you know, shake their shoulders a little bit or tap their shoulders. Um, you'll want to call 911. You're going to administer that Narcan. Um, and then it's also key to kind of give rescue breathing um, if it's needed, and then you're going to care for the person. Um, so some things that you might see are blue or grayish lips and fingernails. Um, skin may turn gray or blue. Um, or you might have an overall blue or grayish appearance. And then usually you'll have a, a pulse, but it's going to be a really slow, erratic, or not present. Um, and then at, there are some cases where they'll have constricted pupils as well. So the image to your right um, kind of shows you another description of when you would use the Narcan. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so when you're administering uh, Narcan, what you want to do is you want to tilt the head back and obviously support the neck. Um, you'll insert the Narcan into, the, um, into the, the nose, and then you're going to press the plunger firmly. Um, so you'll allow two to three minutes just for that uh, Narcan to circle through the body. And then if you don't see any, um, any signs or symptoms of that person coming back, you're going to want to wait those two to three minutes, and then um, you can administer another dose. There has been instances where people have used 
two, three, four cycles of Narcan to bring someone back as well. Um, each victim will react differently with Narcan. Um, most will wake up um, simply confused and disoriented. Um, they can also um, become combative as well because they're in a they're in a high state and they're coming out of um, you know being at that high, so they might not know where they are or might be confused as well too. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, just a couple more things to know. It is strongly recommended that anyone receiving Narcan um, be transported to the hospital by EMS. Um, there are some instances where opioids have long-lasting effects. Maybe Narcan brought them back, but then they could go back into, um, you know, not being visible, and then they might need another dose of Narcan or help after that. So it is important to kind of involve um, authorities and get them transported by EMS. Um, and like I said, Narcan may wear off, um, causing the person to lose consciousness again. So it's important to have 911 or EMT or professionals involved. Uh, next slide. So as I started at the beginning of the presentation, um, opioids is a really big concern here in Adams County, you know, also throughout the state. So I want to have a strategic plan with my public health team. I want to be completely transparent with uh, the community and key stakeholders in Adams County. Um, so I'm working with my team and those stakeholders along with Drug Free Adams County and our opioid work group that I'm a part of to kind of get this strategic plan going into um, Adams County and our community. So some priority areas that you have, and again, this is just a rough draft. Like I said, we received this allotment about two weeks ago. So we want to be working with the jail. There are some individuals that use coming out of um, being in jail. So they're going to want some Narcan coming out of that friendship connection, which is big. Um, we want individuals feeling safe when they're getting their Narcan or not to be as concerned or stressed when they're receiving their Narcan. Um, so friendship connection would be a good place to kind of reduce the stigma and not make people feel like they're not welcome to get that. Um, also the school district, you know, drugs are being being out throughout the youth and um, with young adults. So having maybe some Narcan and first aid kits at all the school districts would be helpful too in case a student were to, to take a drug as well. Um, working with um, behavioral health as well, making sure that they have stuff that they need for their um, patients and clients as well. And then I would like some on hand for emergencies at Health and Human Services if someone wanted to come in and get some resources too. Um, and then also support groups, there's caregiver support groups, um, so we want to make sure that those families have support and have that on hand just in case that that's something that they're going through with their with their children or family members. Um, and then we're working on some additional things too, like public access. I want to hold community education classes. Um, I want to be out about in the community, making sure we're getting all this allotment of Narcan out into our community's hands there. Um, so I could schedule in, individual appointments um, or help hold classes as well too. So, and then I just wanted to mention I'm also working with Drug Free Adams County um, and our opioid work group too. Uh, next slide. Um, one more back, there you go. So state reporting. Uh, the state is uh, really finicky on how we have our strategic plan. So it's really important that I finalize that soon along with working with our medical director to get that um, strategic plan and get those standing orders issued with our medical um, advisor. And then Part of that is going to be with the reporting. So if I give 25 uh, doses to maybe our sheriff's department or to the jail, I have to report that each month of where it's going so that we have a strategic plan and they know where everything is going in the state along within our community. Um, so you can kind of see with some of the lines on there that uh, even the reporting is a little bit intensive, uh, but they're, we're making sure that we're hitting all the areas in our county, which is gonna be crucial for reducing this. Um, last slide. I did want to open it up to questions. I know I kind of went through education, how to how to use Narcan, the science behind it, and then our strategic plan. So I did want to open that up to questions if there were any tonight. I know I covered a lot in a short period of time. Supervisor Grabarski. I've had, got a couple of three questions here. And the first one, I think is going to go Your to Your mic Michelle. isn't on. It's on. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you get any education in school from the use of Narcan? And if so, what class would it be in? And... Mike. Maybe like for a week in health class, we'll go over like a couple drugs 
Okay. And what might happen to you, but that's about it. All right, thanks. Uh, all right, Cody, your turn. Uh, so if someone was going to uh, get an RCAM, they have to go through what to get it and where to get it. Yeah, so if they wanted to get it um, in Adams County from Health and Human Services and Public Health, they could set up an appointment to work with me or my team. They could come in to have like an office visit. We could come in the clinic room. We could show them the resources, talk to them about how about they could do it. Um, I'll also hold community classes. So, you know, we'll be on the radio, newspaper, social media, advertising, obviously, that, you know, maybe June 1st, we'll have a um, Narcan clinic where people could come in, learn how to utilize it, get the resources and go from there too. So it'll be advertised highly. So everyone would know where to access that, but a lot of public relations to kind of get that out there. And then is there any program that you plan to work with the school on educating the youth? Yeah. So that's part of our strategic plan is working with the school district. Initially, we're going to work with the nurses first and then um, some of the lead teachers and then a um, eventually, I'm hoping to have like an assembly where all teachers and staff could learn about it. And then eventually it would lead to the students where they could learn about it too. The only thing is we can educate them, but we can only hand out so much Narcan at the same time. So we want to make sure we're utilizing our allotment the best that we can, but um, the school would be a big part of that strategic plan. All right. So you've got 300 bottles was dispersed to you, to HHS. Yes, correct. All right. Is there... Do they expire? Yeah. So uh, this first allotment expires um, the June of 2025. So, okay. And then in September, we had the opportunity again to apply for more. So my plan with the strategic plan is get that dispersed out as soon as possible, get those educations, training, knocking out in the community. Come September, we have a bunch more to kind of get more out there. All right. And I've got one final question, sure. at least for now. <laughs> um, is there... Okay, so we got Narcam and all of a sudden um, drugs and stuff become safer because we have an outlet that, you know, I'm not going to die. I can get my buddy to give me this stuff. So you're not you're not viewing it or you don't think people will view it that way at all? No, and, and that, um, there are no, you, you can't get addicted to Narcan. And what they're finding is with THC, it's being laced with fentanyl. Um, so there's a lot of fentanyl going around too. So for example, if someone um, is, is purchasing uh, THC and they and it's laced with fentanyl and they're not aware of that, um, even with testing with the fentanyl test strips, that that Narcan would would hopefully bring them back. Um, so there's we're not finding cases where you're addicted to Narcan. There's no science behind that you are addicted to it or that you could use it as a as a gateway for anything. It's prevention only. Thanks, Cody. Oh. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I may, uh, Cody, um, you talked about the uh, people coming in to access this Narcan. Now, we realize time is just the essence when somebody's overdosing from something. How long is this process, does this process take? Say if they, they're, they're ODing and they come in to get this resource, uh, how how long does it take and how do we, how do we make sure that they're not abusing i mean not that like you said they're not, they're not using it as a, a drug but in some way abusing it to have it on hand how do we decipher that and how long does it take them to get this you know in a, in a sure. state where they're yeah so so with narcan it's all about prevention um you know we want to prevent accidental suicides or deaths in adams county so this is going to be huge on that um so for example you mentioned someone coming in wanting to get narcan maybe it's a family member who knows their son or daughter is is using opioids or something and they just want it on hand if they're out and about and something happens to their son or daughter so that would be great um that's the kind of clientele we want coming in but also if someone is using opioids and they want to have something on hand maybe they'll let a friend or a buddy know that they have Narcan with them in their vehicle or something um, if, if, you know, if they were to overdose or something like that. But when you insert someone with Narcan, it takes two to three minutes to kind of to bring them back. So that's where that time frame is coming from that you mentioned before in your question. I guess what I'm wondering, you know, is how long does it take them to get the Narcan? How long does it take them or take you to distribute this? Oh, yeah. So with our strategic plan, let's just say 
as soon as our medical advisor um, issued those orders for us to use Narcan, um, you know, it could be as early as next week, I could have appointments available. Um, so then the training, I could do a 10 minute training up to a one hour training, um, depending on the experience of Narcan with that individual and they'll have it that day. Um, but with our strategic plan, we only have, you know, 300 to start with, but that'll be built into to more of those in the future, so. You could. I mean, if somebody worked coming in to come in there that was OD and you could provide them with this immediately is, is what I'm asking is, is, I mean. Hypothetically, yeah. If someone was coming in and they, you know, had concerns, they would probably call 911 if they felt like they were ODing mm -hmm. or if they were with somebody, but they could come in hypothetically okay. um, with someone else too, and we could get that training into them and they would have it right away. So Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then another question. Um, I was reading something about withdrawal. Now, is that withdrawal from the Narcan or is that withdrawal from the opioids uh, or is it both? I mean, is, do they have withdrawal symptoms from the Narcan? Yeah, so it would be from um, from the Narcan bringing them back. So they'd have withdrawals from the opioid that they were using. So correct, yep. Yeah. yeah, there's no side effects to Narcan at all, so. All right, thank you for that, Cody. Thank Appreciate you. it. Kelly, you wanted to clarify something? I do just want to clarify that if someone is actively overdosing, that the best line is to contact 911 not to come into our building. Um, our access to Narcan is to push it out into the community so that, you know, the friends, the family members have that on hand prior to an overdose. Um, if we had a consumer who came into the building, maybe they had an appointment and they used prior to coming in and they actually had an overdose in our lobby we would be able to attend to them. Yeah, but they would not call us if they were having an overdose. Yeah, we wanna make sure it's as much out into the community, into the hands of the people who can can be there to help support someone. Yeah, thank you for that, Kelly, appreciate it. Jess, did you have something you wanted to bring forward? I would just add um, to Supervisor Grabarski, it, it, there's been nothing and Cody, please, I'm sure this was covered in your training too. Like there's been nothing to show that people use more because they have access to Narcan. As a matter of fact, nine times out of 10, they don't really always want the Narcan because they've used money to purchase the substance they have. And by using Narcan, it overrides that, right? So there's been nothing to show that people use more because they have this very very awesome, safe alternative um, to make sure they don't die. You know, I, I, I think that is a very valid concern that you had. And people often wonder that question. We, we had the same question when we pushed Narcan out to the tribe. And we had to really do a lot of education so people understood that it doesn't allow people to use more frequently or more often or anything like that. Supervisor Pease. I hear where you're talking about you administer, you wait two to three minutes, so you administer it again, you administer it again. In those situations, that two to three minutes seems like two to three hours to most people. So do people eventually just use more because they just can't wait they, because they're not getting that response? And B, um, if you do wait three minutes, now your circulation, I'm talking about brain loss and things like that, um, are we seeing that? And if they come back, are they having some cognitive problems after that? Sure. So part of the state training is like the train response. Um, so there's, so we, we lay them on their side and we, we put their arm, um, over their head just to, um, for precaution. So there's a train response with that. And then with the trainings, um, as soon as you, as soon as you do the shake and wake and there's, there's nothing going on, you call 911 right away. Um, so then when you administer the Narcan, um, like you said, it, it is a long time to wait two to three minutes, especially when time is of the essence. Um, but there are situations where, you know, you're giving Narcan and they, they might be more combative or they might be of us in a little daze or something like that. Um, but as soon, as soon as you see like the symptoms coming back, there's no need to issue that Narcan again. Um, and that's why it's good to have the 911 on hand and EMT coming that way they can make that call too. So. Are there any other questions or did anyone that's on Zoom have a question? No, hearing none. Cody, thank you very All much right, and good you. luck.
Okay, the next meeting is June 12th. We will be meeting here again at four o'clock. Yes, in this room. Seeing there's no other business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.